health sector in Nigeria is far from over, but there is a kind of relief regarding Dr. Strike. The Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors has signed a memorandum of understanding with the federal government towards ending their strike, and this came after the doctors met with the Senate Committee on Health, the House of Reps Committee on Health, and the Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngige, to deliberate on their demands. Meanwhile, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Isa Pantami, says Nigeria requires additional 363,000 medical doctors to meet the target of the World Health Organization. And the minister explained that the situation is worsening with the doctor attending to more than five, a doctor rather, attending to more than 5,000 patients. BKO is strike. It's quite frightening, you know, getting to hear that. We have about, just from his analysis, one doctor to 5,000. But the brain drain is still on. Well, first off, how would you describe first this current situation between the federal government, the Nigerian Medical Association, and the Nigerian Resident Association of Resident Doctors? How would you describe this triangle? As you know, they've been on this um, matter for some time. Mm. Uh, as I said yesterday, these demands are more than two years old. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually in 2020 that they made up their minds that they were going to go on strike. Um, they went on strike, I think, in December of that year. And the um, government continued to deliver on their demands. You know how long it took government to address the issue of hazard allowance? They were paying the same hazard allowance that was instituted in the ACES. You know, whatever you are paying to someone as an allowance that was instituted in the 1980s, inflation must have eroded it completely. Right. And now if we are saying we want doctors to stay here and work, if we are saying we are worried about the rate at which doctors are leaving our country, then we have to improve their welfare. There are states that have set up state universities and are owing doctors. If you do not have sufficient funds, why should you set up state university in the first place? I think there ought to even be a kind of moratorium on that because people are just setting up universities for fun, believing that that is one of the dividends of democracy. How do we ensure that these universities are properly maintain and you know to give them good access roads provide money for them to 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 um, get instruction and materials and all that we, are, we don't care about it we just go and set them up you know so they complained that even the the matter of um, um hazard allowance that they are, they are being paid that states should um, domesticate some of those agreements. Mm. For example, residency training. They agreed to residency training after a long fight. But some states have not domesticated it. So they also complained that their, their colleagues in the states were being owed in some cases up to five months' salary. How do you owe a doctor five months' salary? Ha, somebody that is, uh, people's lives are in his hands. You don't care about his welfare. He's going, he's going to inadvertently kill people. We've seen doctors who forgot uh, su social materials inside the uh, women's uh, yeah. belly. And you are creating a situation in which their heads are turned, they are not happy. Yeah. More of such things will happen. So, in my view, just as we said uh, the other day, someone said, ah, why? Uh, I think yes, that why should they go on strike? This late. I said, no. This, they had been talking, even in January, they said they were going on strike. Eventually, they didn't go. So, that's why I felt that this government is on its way out. Government is a continuum. Go ahead, get into that agreement with them, and I'm happy that that is uh, um, uh, what uh, we are told has been done now. Mm. They are going to give them a pay rise using ASU's template. You know, they use the same template for ASU so that they can have, um, they can earn more money, their, their welfare can be better taken care of. Probably because of that, 
some people uh, will remain here and work. Mm. But Hopefully. Yes, but the, the environment, the it's fact that clean. the equipment to work with are likely not there. Why are people targeting tertiary medical centers? Tertiary yeah, medical yeah. centers are supposed to be centers of excellence and all that. Training schools. Yeah. Yes, but what do you have? Because the primary health people don't want not. to work in the, in in the, the rural areas. Centers, yeah. There has to be incentive to even get. What Pantami is saying, people will now, doctors don't want to work in those rural areas. Everybody wants to come to the urban center. Because even the tools to work with are not there. So how do we deal with this situation? We need more medical colleges. If you know the number of medical colleges that India has, that's why India is the world's number one exporter of doctors. Mm. They have so many medical colleges. We do not have enough. We need to have more medical colleges. That's the only way we can bridge this gap. 5,000 uh, patients, to a, patients, doctor. Uh, patients to a doctor. It can be alarming. It, it, it's alarming. It's yeah. terrible. That's why. Health is collapsing in our country. Yeah, this, is, this, is, this is even conservative. Yeah. It's conservative, you say? Yeah. Really? So you think it's more it than that? Worse. Yeah, because it I, I, know, I know that uh, University of Ibadan is easily the best teaching hospital in this part of the world. And they are some of the best brains. But they too are going through this. And these are people that normally do not live with Ibadan for anything. They're talking about those who are beyond doctors. What they call the misters. Hmm? They have a name. After a doctor, you become something, leader also. You have a name, sir, between being ordinary doctors mm. and being consultants. And these are people who don't need to go anywhere. Some of the best in the world. Same thing with OAU, same thing with some, some of the best hospitals in the Southwest. Mm. And it's, it's no longer a trickle, it's not a flood. Because somebody you saw at a wedding two weeks ago, mm. as for him that today, that. He, he or she is no you longer. You know what they said in the past that it was the consultants. The senior yeah, people that used to travel. These days, as they are coming out of medical college, what is on their mind is to travel. It was not like that before. There was a guy that I met in Benway. He was watching this program. He now sent me a message. He said, Jide, I'm shedding tears as I write this. I know. I'm about to leave. He was watching. He said, I'm about to leave too. And my plan was to work for 10 years. But now I can't take it anymore. You can't. Well, you know, there was a law about this where it was proposed that um, there's a bill rather proposing yeah. bonding for doctors, you know, to, to work for five years before they yeah, finally yeah, leave. Yeah. The federal think? government has rejected. Yeah, no, they reject. Oh, it's against the labor laws. No, you, no, can't you, can't, you can't force anybody. Mm -hmm. the, one, the, the one we had in the 60s was essentially. Economic labor migration, you can't stop you it. Can't, you can't. People, Skilled laborers. Mm. No, no, you cannot. All over the world, they are in, in, in demand. Even, even uh, Egypt. That came up with the law because we like copying people. Yeah. Egypt started that law, saying that once you come out of medical college, you must work in a public hospital uh, health facility for three years before you can even move to a private hospital. In spite of that, in spite of that problem, eleven thousand six hundred oh. Egyptian uh, doctors. doctors left the country in three years. And Egypt is one of the places that Nigerians go to for Medicare. And that, that they also, are staying. Yeah, that, this also raised the question of medical tourism. Do you yeah. think perhaps this also fuels the brain drain that we are witnessing in that country? And perhaps this needs to be stopped? Perhaps checks from those from the top before it gets down to the bottom. What do you think? Well, uh, we, uh, we have no health facilities in the first People place. will not stay here. So nobody's going to stay behind. Okay. No, patriotism is dead. You have to understand that. You have the money you go abroad. Because if you know what you want, so you don't want to die, you will go. And I'm not talking about those who are very rich who has money. Anybody with any little ailment will go. Remember the joke about the, the man with the soccer cruise in his chest? You remember it? And they went to India. They realized the cockroach was not in his chest. It was inside the extreme machine. That's how bad. So describe the Guinea medical facilities as you have it. Mm. There's an hospital to Jokoro that used to serve basically as the reference center. Last year, they, had, they brought in 20 young doctors. As I speak to you now, there are only two of them left. They brought young doctors because the Pakistanis were no, were no longer coming mm. as they were. Nigeria was their 
choice uh, 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now they prefer to go to London because things are better there. Yeah. Before, once they are living in Pakistan, Nigeria is their first place to come. But now most of them prefer to go to Canada or go to England. Our own boys that were brought in last year, January, 20 of them, only two are left as of yesterday. Mm -hmm. And this is not even a government. These are this is an hospital that was paying them well. Even private hospital. By Nigeria well, standard. Mm -hmm. Private to missionary hospital. They live. Paying them well, giving them houses, making sure that the money they were paid moves with the times. Right. That it will stop them. Yesterday, two people left out of 20. Final thoughts. What are your, what are your recommendations if we were to address this issue? I think the, the issue of, um, um, one, we have to produce more doctors. Right. Two, we have to do our best to keep our doctors. our doctors. Otherwise, we are approaching an emergency situation because no doctors alone are living. Pharmacists are living. Um, laboratory Lab technicians. Uh, technicians are living. Nurses. Dentists and nurses are living. They are all living. Nurses, especially. So that sector is in crisis. Mm. Unless we do our best to improve the lot of the professional, the health professionals, and even provide equipment, the tools for them to work with. Because some of them are saying, ah, look, when I go abroad, I'll be able to work with the best equipment. Mm. And I will have access to training. Some of the training that they need are not here. So those conditions more. that are making people, the doctors, doctors to, to not leave. want to stay, right. we need to do something about it. Going to disrupt their examination as we did. You know, they were writing an exam to go yeah. to... UK or where, where that will not solve the problem. Going to disrupt the examination it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. There was a girl who met her, oh, the person who trained her as a doctor, mm -hmm. uh, her, her own uh, consultant. Waiting for the same as if uh, consultant. Right. More than 20 years ago, the person who trained her. Wow. They were writing the same exam, wanted to go abroad. Well, let's leave it at that for now. Because of time, we cannot continue this conversation. I'd like to thank you, my guests, as usual, Babajide Koladi Otitoju, thank you so much for thank your you. insights. Thank and Gani Kayode Balugun, thank you as well for your insights. Well, that's